Yes, Melanie. Yes, a ladybug is not gonna bite. <coughs> Ladybugs are not bad, Nene. They're good bugs. I know you don't want to hear that, hey, but they're good mommy. bugs. May I play with the water? With what water? Mommy, may I help you? Yes. Do you remember what this plant's called? It calls sage. Sage plant. Yes, it's sage, and so mommy's just cutting some sage. May I have some? Okay, sure. Yes, little grasshoppers. Today we're going to be taking sage, and we're going to be turning it into a hydrosol. This was a very easy and straightforward method. I'm going to show you the unboxing of the distiller, show you the process, and then show you, you know, and let you know my final thoughts about the distiller if I think that it is a good value. So if that interests you, keep watching. Okay, so first I just started taking off pieces of the sage. I have two separate areas, or actually three, but two separate areas where I got some of my sage from. It actually didn't take very much. It was about maybe two to three handfuls. I went ahead and just took off some of the tops. I really have so much sage that it doesn't really matter where I cut it from. Um, that ideally, you know, when you're looking at these plants where they grow more like a shrub, you do just want to be careful that you're not cutting off all of the new growth, but also because it is the spring and, you know, I feel okay doing it. You can go ahead and wash them off, but I was just looking at them, making sure that they were really clean. I chose pieces that didn't have any bug bites or anything like that. And so I stuffed it all in. And as you've seen, I made sure that I put this little metal piece and I made sure I put the latch so that you can pull it up and out and you want to put that on the bottom that comes with two you put that on the bottom first kind of like when you're canning and you have a something on the bottom to keep it from right off of the heat so I went ahead and put that on the bottom and then I did put that on top as well and that's what the direction stated that you want to do now I'm inside and I'm going to fill the bottom part. This is the part that's going to be on the heat. And you go ahead and you fill it up. And you can fill it to the max line. So once I finish putting in, in the second quart, you can see, if you look very closely, that it does say max. And I'm below the max here. All right. So once I did that, it's time to go ahead and attach the top part where I put the sage. So I'm just going to twist it. It's actually really simple. It goes really quickly. This is what it looks like. Now it's the time for me to go ahead and add that top piece. And I just make sure that it's easy for me to just pull it out once I'm done. So I make sure I have that again upwards. And I could put a, a little bit more herbs in here. Okay. So once I do that, it's time to put up another piece on top of it. And it's just the twist of the hand and this is actually what will connect to the second part of the distiller so now i'm going to go to the next process and this is putting lots of ice to the top of this vesicle here and we're going to put a little bit of water in it but honestly i think it's best just to put the ice because it will eventually melt and just putting the water in it is just going to make it melt quicker. So the purpose of this portion is because you'll have the tubes that will carry the steam from one spot to the other. And once it gets to this, it's going to cool. So stainless steel is very sensitive to temperatures. For instance, if you put it hot or cold water in like a thermos that is saying the steel, you will feel it on the outside. And so just having that cold uh, the cold water and the cold ice is going to be enough to actually cause condensation to happen. And that's what our hydrosol is. It's basically the cooled vapor. One of the things I love about it is that it is shell stable. And with this process, if you do enough of the hydrosol, you can actually get some essential oil. I actually didn't get any in this process. And spoiler, I did get even more than 16 ounces, which I was really surprised about. I did not expect to get so much. Once I did that, the only other thing I needed to do was to prop it up. 
and have a little bowl there that can collect the liquid. And so it's, it's actually really easy. And I only use one part of the stove here. So it was fine to add the bowl here. But what did actually start to happen was that I noticed it was actually leaking. Instead of coming out the little spout, it was first coming out through um, the, the tubing area. So I actually lost a lot of the hydrosol. And I thought that it was just the water because of the condensation of the pot. But then later on, I saw that it was actually leaking. And it took a while for it to later, but it did start coming out through the tubing as well. And it did stop leaking after a while. So that was my only con about using this. And when I was looking at reviews before I did purchase it, I did see someone said that that happened to them as well. So it could be that it wasn't tightened. It's going to be for me. It's just something that I, I share with my husband and um, he'll probably, you know, he'll have something to help me out. But it may be something he said you could put tape around it since it's not actually getting on the heat. That's something that you can do, but maybe I'll also reach out to the manufacturer and see what their suggestion is on that. So now as you see, this hydrosol comes out nice and clear. And it does have the scent of whatever you use. But I will say, if you haven't used hydrosols before, they do not smell as great as essential oils. The essential oils is actually where you get that from most of the smell from. And a lot of the properties of the actual plant come from essential oils, which is why they're so powerful. But the hydrosols is basically called flower water. It's used in culinary uses, and I love to use it for facial toners. Um, but there's all different kind of ways that you can use it because they are generally expensive it's usually more than ten dollars an ounce and and that's just even for lavender hydrosols if you get rolls or something like that it can be even more expensive i've seen some twenty dollars or more so to get this much just from getting access from my garden is a win the sage hydrosol doesn't smell that great. It does have the sage smell, but of course, as I said, the essential oils is what gives that wonderful smells that we love. My mom also was talking about doing hydrosols because she uses Febreze to freshen the room. And so this would be a way to kind of freshen up. You can add some essential oils to add additional scent, but it's, you know, it's natural. You can use it to spray on your pillows. And so it is a really wonderful alternative. And you can even use it in cleaning products as well and for body care. So all in all, this product was packaged nicely. Um, didn't really have any issues. It had one page of notes or instructions, but I felt like it was really beginner friendly. You can do really small batches and still get a lot of value from it. So it's something I definitely recommend. And I'll have all the information down below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.